Today we're going to take a look at the LG 34UM67 Ultra Widescreen Gaming Monitor. It's an upgrade of the 34UM65. Uh, the big added feature is AMD FreeSync, which leverages the DisplayPort Adaptive Sync technology so that the refresh rate of your monitor will match uh, the frame rate of your video card. On this pre-production model that I have, uh, the range it's designated is 48 hertz or frames per second up to 75. So the panel refresh rate does go past 60, which will be a uh, welcome feature for many. The production model will carry a floor of 40 frames per second, giving a full 35 frames between 40 and 75 where the adaptive sync feature kicks in. Uh, this is really important as it allows for a much greater uh, range of utilization for many titles. Um, some things that don't need that uh, high FPS or twitch factor like RPGs or maybe puzzle games or something else, you'll be able to leverage and enjoy adaptive sync all the way down from 40 FPS up to 75. So the 34UM67 um, is geared towards gamers. It's targeted at the gamer market. It is a relatively light 2560 by 1080p uh, resolution. It is an IPS panel, so you have good uh, color quality, brightness, saturation, and contrast. So LG has added a couple of key features to help offset um, what many gamers find as negatives on an IPS panel, that being the slow response time. So there's an overdrive feature, which at a medium setting works really well and doesn't um, negatively affect your picture quality, but will improve the uh, response time. And then there's also a gamer mode um, like what you'll see on many TVs to help reduce input lag and sync the actual input from your mouse and keyboard or gamepad to the output on the uh, display. From a connectivity standpoint, the 34UM65 offers DVI, DisplayPort, and HDMI. At a 2560 by 1080 p resolution, DVI is still a viable option for connectivity, um, and you can still drive that at up to 75 hertz or frames per second. The front bezel is relatively thin and offers a matte finish uh, to help reduce glare in addition to the um, anti-glare coating on the display itself. The stand on the display offers a, a bit to be desired. Um, it only offers a forward and backward tilt. Um, there is no rotation available and to adjust height you have to actually unbolt and remove the stand um, and reattach it with the only adjustment being about an inch or two difference. So here's a piece of the Heaven Demo. If you look on the left hand side as the uh, screen spins around you can see some tiling or um, sort of wiping or stuttering. You can see that here again as, you, as a line kind of moves up the screen uh, showing how the screen is reacting to the different frame rates. We'll take a piece of that here and slow it down a little bit at 120 frames a second and it's much more pronounced there with the houses on the left as they spin around and then on the dragon wing there on the right. So this is again with free sync off and here as we move around it's quite prominent. Slowing it down even further at 7 20p and 240 frames a second, you can very clearly see the wipes as they go through where the monitor is out of sync with the refresh rate and it's trying to uh, adjust for that or just simply not able to. As we spin around here you can see the stairs on the right sort of juddering back and forth as these different uh, frames move in and out. Here we're doing a comparison. On the left is free sync on, on the right is free sync off. Now watch the dragon wing as it goes from left to right. You can see it pick up the stuttering on the right hand side as we go through and that stuttering is not present there on the left. Now one thing to remember is that this pre-production model the free sync is only active from 48 frames per second or 48 hertz up to 75. I've been in contact with LG and the production models actually go down to 40 frames per second. So some of the stuttering that you're seeing right now or just previous to when I'm talking at 
45, 46, and 47 frames per second would be smooth. Here again, splitting it top and bottom, you can see the wiping or rolling on the top half. Um, and as it rolls down to the bottom, that goes away. There are still some stuttering, some instances. FreeSync doesn't wipe it out completely. And sharp drops in frame rate where the benchmark or the game itself actually chokes and stutters um, is not going to be wiped out by FreeSync entirely. But it's very clear here. Um, again, right now at this moment, we're at a 44, 45 frames per second. And the stuttering that you see on the bottom would not be there in the production model. This is the Unigen Valley demo. We see the camera here going down the hillside, lots of trees going by. If you look closely again, you can kind of see that rolling of the frames uh, moving up the screen. Here you can see it a little bit in some more lateral movement, uh, more horizontal side to side um, in contrast to the vertical uh, movement that you see here. The, the stuttering and rolling here is pretty pronounced at this point even uh, when we look at it here at 120 frames per second, not even having to go all the way down to 240. As we look here at the side by side, sort of this lateral movement, you can start to pick up the stuttering um, from the flowers as they go by. You can see sort of the fits and starts. And again, anything from 40 to 48 frames per second or hertz that is not uh, smoothed out here would be smoothed out in the production model. Here at 240 frames a second, the rolling, the stuttering, the multiple frames on the screen at once is very evident. The stuttering of the flowers here as they move right to left is very prominent and it's easy to notice um, as the scene moves along. Here like we did before, we're going to look at the, the left and right. Um, on the left is with FreeSync on and again while it's not perfect you can see um, much improved over the right hand side with FreeSync off. Right there on the right you can see the the flowers and such stuttering and hitching um, as they move from the left side to the right side. And then here splitting it top and bottom. Um, again as we get started and it settles in um, the bottom smooths out while the top is still um, hitching and stuttering much more than the bottom. Here with these flowers you can see that that whole bottom segment is now smooth with all of it being in the uh, free sync area. So at the end of the day the question is would I recommend this panel? I can't wholeheartedly recommend it like I would its um, larger brother the 34UC97. Um, for me that was a great mix of resolution, pixel density, physical size, um, and image quality. This panel does carry the um, large image size and the ultra wide form factor and it also has a lot of great features geared towards gamers, uh, in my opinion the best of which is the AMD FreeSync. However, as a daily driver for productivity, I just need more pixels. 2560 by 1080 um, is not enough for me. I'm always looking for more vertical height in particular but also more horizontal width. Um, and from a productivity standpoint, the pixel density is a little low. I've just got too many years at this point spoiled by retina displays on a MacBook Pro or an iPhone or an iPad or a 28 inch 4K monitor and now the 3440 by 1440p 32 inch ultra wide. So from a daily driver to meet all my needs, uh, I can't recommend it for that. But for gaming at this resolution, um, you're really able to turn on a lot of quality settings. You can get a lot of eye candy. With anti-aliasing turned on, you're probably not going to notice uh, the low pixel density. It also means that you don't need a huge video card to push it. For the games that I tested um, and looked at, I looked at Bioshock Infinite, also looked at um, Shadows of Mordor, and then the two Unigen demos that we looked at for the FreeSync. And on those, like, Mordor is... it. You know, it's really hard on systems. It has been, especially the ultra settings. But with an R9 285 on very high settings, I was getting 60 frames a second. Uh, same kind of thing with Bioshock Infinite. You know, it's a little older title, not quite as demanding. 
but still with an R9 285, I could play that on Ultra and Shadows of Mordor on very high, hitting the 60, 75 frames per second max of this panel. So you can save a little money with this panel. It retails for about $560. And that compares to $800 of the bigger non-curved version, 34 um, UC95. So you can save about $240 by choosing this version. And then you can apply that money to really a whole new graphics card to match with it, or even upgrading a graphics card class. So I can't highly recommend it because it you know, won't, wouldn't meet all of my needs as a single monitor, but if you're using it with a dual monitor setup and you have something higher res for productivity, or if those things don't matter to you, that pixel density from a productivity standpoint, or maybe you've got a notebook or some other machine that you use for that, from a gaming perspective, I can wholeheartedly recommend it, but on the whole, we'll give it our silver recommended award.